Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing Quicksilver, written by Dean Koontz. It's a Dean Koontz book released in 2022. And some of his recent books have been hit and miss with me. But this book, I really enjoyed. It's a strange mix. It's paranormal, it's sci-fi, it's a thriller. A little bit of horror in there as well. It made me think of his books, Odd Thomas and the Jane Hawke series. It had that vibe to it, especially the Odd Thomas vibe. And it comes from the main character and also just the way the book's written, the overall plot. I get just the impression that he may have borrowed slightly from his own books when he wrote this book. Our main character is called Quinn Quicksilver. And I do like his name, even though it sounds a bit comic book hero. You know, that alliteration with the first letter in the first and surname. But it does work in this book. He's an orphan. So as a child, he was, as a baby, he was found abandoned in the middle of a road. And he had something pinned to him, a note, and it said his name is Queen Quicksilver. So that's what he was named. They could never find somebody to adopt him. So he lived his whole life, up to 18 years of age, in an orphanage. And his orphanage sounds like heaven for the kids who were staying there. The nuns helped them out so much, taught them, you know, worked out jobs for them, worked out ways for them to get scholarships if they needed it to. And it just seems like this orphanage was heaven for all the kids that were staying there. He didn't want to go to college, so he became an author, a writer for a magazine. And again, yes, we have a writer character that Dean Koontz has created in one of his books. And I don't know, I'm, I'm going to guess that virtually every book Dean Koontz writes has a writer, an author, somewhere as a character in the story. And I think somebody one day should make a tally, list all Dean Koontz books and all different character types in those books. Maybe I'll do that as I go through them. A bit of a project for me. Watch this space. I'll see if I get around to it. But anyway, he's, he's a writer and he gets an urge to travel somewhere in the desert and he goes to this abandoned building and he finds a gold coin. He gets that gold coin appraised by a friend and finds out it's worth about $40,000. So the person says, I'll buy it off you for 30 grand. And with that, he you know gets the 30 grand and then he decides that he needs to do a few different things. He needs to almost make out a, make a bug out kit, put it in his car and put his car somewhere, store it away somewhere where he can get easy access to it in case he gets in trouble. And Trouble soon finds him. He's approached by two guys in suits. And they want to talk to him about something. But he gets bad vibes from them. And then he's helped out by some friends. He manages to escape, get in his car, and just drives off. Doesn't know where he's going, but he assumes he's just going somewhere he needs to be. He's following his intuition, it seems, at this point in the story. At his destination, he ends up rescuing a girl about his own age and her grandfather. And it seems like they've been waiting for him for two years. She had a dream about him, that her future husband would rescue her from danger. And this is where the story then goes further into the paranormal and sci-fi elements as well. The girl's name is Bridget and the grandfather's name is Sparky. And from Bridget, Quinn learns that he's special, that they've got special gifts and the gifts seem to develop and get stronger and new gifts seem to develop as well as, sto as the story goes on. And that's where all the sci-fi element comes into it. They don't know why they're special. They don't know why they've got these gifts or where they come from. Bridget does know that there are other people around who have certain gifts. Not the same as theirs, you know, different gifts. People, different people have different gifts. But they all seem to know each other at sight, it seems, in this story. I don't know if that seems odd or not, you know, too easy for the characters or not. It just maybe something about them that they notice good people who have gifts because it does seem that there are bad people who have gifts as well. Some of the bad people that are in this story, some of the villains, I guess, are these creatures that disguise themselves as human. And this is also where a bit of the Odd Thomas thing comes in. And also there was another book that Dean Quince wrote the Twilight Eyes, I think it's called, about a guy who sees the aliens who are wearing human disguises. And I think that's what this book is borrowing from as well. Quinn and Bridget 
can see these things they call screamers. And they, then they learn that they're called the Nihilum or something like that in the story. These creatures disguise themselves as human in our realm, in our universe. And they come from a different universe or a different point in time. The universe before our universe, I think it's described as in the book. They're coming to our universe to destroy our universe, to take it over and destroy it, basically. And it's up to Quinn and Bridget and their friends, who they find along the way, to stop that from happening. But while they're doing that, while they're trying to stop the Screamers or the Nihilum from taking over our universe, they're also having to avoid these agents in a group called the ISA. The government agents, or so it seems, and they're trying to trap people like Quinn and Bridget. And you get the impression they've already captured people like them before. And we don't know why. We don't know if they're going to experiment on them or use them for some other nefarious means. We just know that they're after people like Bridget and Quinn. They're after people who are special, who have gifts. And it seems the way they find out about these people is through DNA tests. People who submit their own DNA to online sites, to companies, private companies, to get themselves tested to see if they find matches. That's how the government finds out about these people with special gifts. So these people like Quinn and Bridget must not be totally human. They must have other DNA there in the mix. I think of this book as more a soft thriller than a horror. It has paranormal and sci-fi aspects in there as well. I think it's marketed as either a thriller or a horror. I think you know, there's just a mix in there, and it works well. Everything blends very well in this story. And I did like the Odd Thomas vibe in this story. Odd Thomas is one of my favourite Dean Coons books of all time. And I did like the fact that this book reminds me of Odd Thomas. And I get the impression that this book could be the start of a series. And if it is, I will read more in the series, because the characters interest me enough. I like the overall concept of this book. I like that fascinating thing about good versus evil, but the characters are learning about themselves as they go along. It also felt like a David Eddings type fantasy fiction novel. And David Eddings wrote a few series in the fantasy fiction genre. And it was high fantasy, and it always had a prophecy. And the characters were going through the motions of the prophecy as they go along the story. And that's what it felt like in this book. It felt like Quinn and his friends were going along following a prophecy. And they get into situations, and the prophecy would either lead them through that or not. That's what it felt like in the book as well. I got that impression throughout this story. I really did enjoy this read. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. And I'm really glad for that because I've just found that there's a couple of the books I've read by Dean Coons recently, his recent books, that I've enjoyed a lot. Quinn Quicksilver, our main character, is written very much like Odd Thomas. I do prefer the Odd Thomas character more, and I think it's down to Quinn's age in the story. If Quinn was a few years older, had more life experience, maybe he'd be a better character, more engaging. He comes across as overly witty, overly worldly in this book, more than I would think a character of his age and his experience, his history, would be. That's a little bit of a flaw in the character. Doesn't make me hate the character or dislike the character, but I think that Koontz may not have taken just the right level of care when creating the whole character for this story. But he's still engaging, he's still interesting, and he still makes a, worth, a worthy main character in a story. Bridget, who's the mysterious woman that Quinn rescues. She's interesting. She almost feels like a wise woman character. And she's wise beyond her years and knows much more than you'd think she would know for her age and her own experience as well. And in some ways, that's a flaw with the character. But in a lot of ways, she's very complete. She has a lot of depth. But the thing about her is that she's just too calm in every crisis. And that seems strange. And that took away some of the thrills in the story. They're in danger in many parts in this story. And Bridget always seems calm and collected. She's always sure they'll get through it okay. You know, trust the universe or just trust fate. Everything will go okay, everything will go along as planned. And that happened quite often in this story. And I think for a thriller, if you want to make us feel tension, want to make us feel engaged and 
want the character to really pop from the page, just make that character not so certain about every situation. That's what I think anyway. Sparky, who's Bridget's grandfather, is used okay in the story, but there are a few things that don't add up. He doesn't have abilities of his own, but he seems the most calm. And I don't get that. If he can't see what's going on, if he can't see beneath the human disguises and see the screamers, how is he so calm all the time? He has to rely on other people to tell him what's going on in those instances in the book. So that didn't add up to me. And also, just like Bridget, he's calm in every situation. There's a couple little bits where he seems a little bit heightened with anxiety, but not enough. And it just makes you realise that in this story, that no matter what the characters face in this story, no matter what our heroes face, they're going to get through it okay. And that just downplays some of the suspense in the book, some of the tension. That's a shame, because I can see Kuntz, you know, trying to amp up that suspense and tension in this story. But that having Bridget and having Sparky so calm in every situation just damped that down quite a lot. Quinn Quicksilver is an enjoyable read. It feels like it may be the first in a series. Kuntz doesn't write many series. He writes more standalone books. But I hope he writes, you know, just at least one or two more in this series. I think it'd be enjoyable to see more of these characters. I rate it a 3.5 out of 5. There's enough there to engage the reader, to really hook you in. But sometimes that tension just fails a bit. And that's a shame because Kuntz is really good at writing tension suspense. And just seemed in this book, he had characters that just seemed too calm and collected. And just felt like it was following kind of a prophecy kind of storyline where things were already laid out in front of the characters and I was going through the motions following that prophecy to get to the end. And I wonder where that will lead the characters if there is further books in this series. On my channel, I do review quite a few horrors. If you're interested in those books, check out my channel and subscribe. There's also a Dean Koontz playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.